So is it really worth that extra money? Well, how do you do? I know it's been a while, I've been kind of under the weather, so, but I've been having everything to make this video, so I said, hey, let's go ahead and uh, let's talk about it. We got the Daiwa Ballistic MQ-LT. This is the new model. Uh, this is the one I showed that uh, I was going to do a review on after I had a chance to actually get it out, and I've had it out three times now, and it, it, it's, it's pretty nice. I give it to it, and uh, don't take my word for it. Again, I hate to sit here and just sit here and talk and explain but here's a quick little highlights of me actually having it out there in action and then come on back and then we'll talk about what I like and what I don't like. All right, we'll see you in a few. Let's try this shore. We'll go out about 10 feet, 15 feet, just like that. Just work it down that shoreline. I know when I'm jig fishing, I get a lot more bites coming up this, this one. If you can, I know y'all probably can't. I know I hate when guys say that shit on YouTube. Well, if you can see, go, well, hell no, we can't. <laughs> but you see that shoreline, how that goes down? So you have a real big drop and then it kind of levels off about 10, 15 feet. So I think they kind of sit and watch that, that drop off if they're still not suspended lethargic, but just kind of lightly tap that sucker across there. So far I'm really liking this reel. I like how it's just like instant, like there's no slop in there whatsoever. I don't know if I put it over my patriarch yet, but it uh, it is definitely really nice. Ooh, did we get stuck on something or was that a bite? Ooh, got, ooh, got one, we got one, we got one. Oh yeah, there we go. Ooh, he slammed it. Oh shit, there we go. Oh man, run buddy. Look at him go. Oh shit, yeah, oh he's a nice one. Woo, man, he's fighting hard. He caught it right on that edge. There we go. Oh yeah, get up here big guy. Oh, look at that, right in the side of the mouth. He just caught it right when I was pulling up that, that sandbar there. Oh, look at him. Yeah. Not to say, what, do you think a pound and a half? Should we use our new fancy scale? Measure that soma gun? Oh, man, I just barely had him hooked. Let's go put our rod down. Set it on our backpack. Make sure we don't get a bunch of shit in it. Man, that reel took it like it was a champ. It's like, is that all you got? You beef a bastard. All right, let's try try out this fancy new scale. Oh man, here we go. Okay, power this sucker up. Maybe hold it down. How's this work? There, yep, maybe flash it. There we go. All right, cool. We zeroed. All right, let's lock him in. You gotta excuse me. I have never used this thing before, so. I gotta figure out how the hell it works. Oh, okay, it's a locking one. There we go. Let's see what we get. We are at, can you see that? 1.78. So almost two pounds. That ain't bad, man. Hell yeah. That'll do it. Thank you, fella. I appreciate it. Try to get you down there as close as I can. As y'all can see, like you get too far because it shows down. You're going in. There you go. Scramble off there, big guy. There he goes. He had to get out of that sludge. He got buried in the mud too. Man, that scale's pretty cool. I don't know how to really use it yet, but it's pretty cool. Tells you the temperature and everything. I don't know why, <laughs> but we like it. All right, that was pretty badass. First one on the new reel. That little Sakoshi bug does work. So we know that works too, man. That's pretty badass. We might have to add this into our arsenal. Let's see if there's anybody else home. He just came up and smashed it. That was nice. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Oop, got another one. Oh man, he, there's more right there. Oh shit. That's back to back on the Sakoshi or whatever you say. Oh, he's running good too. Let's tighten the drag up. Woo, he might be a nicer one. Oh shit, come on. Oh, he is a nicer one. Yeah, there's another one came up chasing with him. Oh man, get up here. Woo, drag you up past the mud. Oh yeah, he's a little bit bigger. Oh yeah, look at that, man. Can you see him? Should we put a weight on him too? 
Damn, he's nice. That worked right in the top of the mouth. So they're just sitting and I just barely had him hooked too. That works. Let's get a weight on him. Gotta use it, man. This thing was $89. <laughs> Gotta get a weights. Zero that sucker out. Boom. All right. Let's see how much this sucker weighs. Shit, we got a nice little bag going on here. See any bigger? Oh, yeah, he's definitely bigger. You guys see that? 2.16. Nice two pounder. Man, I knew it was bigger. He hit it, dude. As soon as it, I just gave it a tap, tap, that sucker was gone. Let's see if we can get him out a little deeper. Get as close as we can here. I know it looks like I'm throwing him very far, but I'm only throwing him about three or four feet. I'm trying to get him out past that, that moss. So, so far, I think you can actually save weights on this sucker. So I need to uh, figure out how to do that too. That way we can get a whole five fish bag going on. But so far, we're about it. Ugh. What was that, two, say 2.2? Oh, whoa, what's that? Is he back up there? What is that? Can y'all see him? There's like a fish. That's not our bass. That is a bass. He looks like he's caught on something. Let's see if we can get him. I can snag him. Oh, never mind. He took off. He was just sunbathing or something. <laughs> Shit. He was like, get the hell off me. What was wrong? That's, he had mud on his back. Maybe he was just kind of stunned or shoot, I don't know. So so far we're two. So we got say a 1.8 and a 2.2. So we're sitting about four pounds. Four pound bag after two fish. I know that ain't shit. That's about one fish. But where I'm at, they don't get too big. I don't know some of y'all down in Florida and down south. Four pounder is a little bitty small one, but. I haven't even hit the five pound mark yet. I think the biggest one I've ever caught is like four and a half. So I'm hoping this year, man, I'll try to get the kayak out on different spots. Now I take, if you're talking bass, now I have caught a walleye about six, seven pounds. And that, that was fun. Man, this little Sakoshi be doing work. I'm liking him. It's out here passing time. Waiting for the Ned to sink. Are we on bottom? Maybe. Could be, should be. Like I said, that you can see if y'all can see it, that wind is just kind of slowly acting like a using my line as a sail and just pulling. Oh god! Oh shit! We had one. God damn it! I pulled it right out of his mouth. He had it. Should've been watching my line. It's like my line was blowing along and just stopped. Ah, that's what I get. Got one right there to there. Oh yeah, right there. Oh, he's smaller. Woo! There we go. Oh, he's feisty too. Look at him. Slow down, big guy. We help you out. Hold on, slow down. Slow down. I know you're mad. Were you the guy that was kept jacking with our lure? You was the guy, wasn't you? All right, hold still. Oh, come on, buddy. I don't want to get hooked, and you want to get unhooked. So let's help each other out. Here we go. Right in the side of the mouth. Man, he's just barely hooked. It's just not in there very good. I'm not even gonna weigh him, but I'll say he's probably about a pound based off what the other ones were. Pretty good. Let's go put him down here next to the canal so we don't spook anybody. Like I said, I'm not throwing, I don't know if people have commented, I'm not throwing him as far as it looks. It's just because of the little ends on the GoPro, but there we go. Man, this bug, this Goshi bug, is killing it so far. Let's get back out there, see if there's anybody else out there. All right, now you see me out there catching a couple of fish on it. Uh, the things, man, so what are the main real features on this that, you know, set it apart from like last year's are the old ballistic LT and like the Daiwa uh, Tatula uh, LT. Well, I think the big thing is uh, one is the, the body. They pretty much went with a monolithic type body, which is supposed to be like a one piece type body, which is going to give you strength. The less joints you have, the more strength you're going to have. Um, which is really nice. I forgot what they said. It's kind of based off a more one of their higher end series reels. 
and they've kind of they've adopted to that. So you can see that. And again, uh, one of the worries of mine that I've talked about before was the uh, anti reverse. You know, that was just one of those things that people says when it's going to go out. And then uh, it was like an inevitable. And so they pretty much eliminated that for him. No anti-reverse. Uh, I think this is an eight uh, ball bearing bill uh, uh, reel, which I think is less than what my, I think my Fluger's an 11 ball bearing. But other than that, it is really smooth. And I think a lot of that has to do with the digi gear in there, which a digi gear is just kind of think how they machine it for a tighter tolerance um, gears on inside and they uh, they used larger digi gears on there, so it's going to be pretty much you know bigger gears, more strength, less slop, and you that's one thing that really kind of got me when I was out there fishing it. You could really feel you know that instant that instant boom action, that instant torque going in there, and it was like there was no slop, there was no there was no flex. I know the body they supposedly have this composite type body that they're using there, and there was. The thing is solid, man. And I think actually if you go through there, a lot of people talk about that these MQ series ballistics are more set up for like those people that are doing like that saltwater type fishing. And I'm not on any saltwater, uh, nowhere near saltwater. But uh, if I can get that extra uh, strength and the security of having the silt system, because that's what the MQ is. It's supposed to be this mag seal system, which is pretty much seals up the internal so you don't get any water or any corrosion type of things going on inside the reel. Um, so you get all those. So if you're on a freshwater freshwater fisherman, yeah, that's just that's just common sense. You know, if I if I can prevent, that's going to add longevity. I might get strength. Um, and I I really like it. I do the bail seems sturdier. I mean, it kind of reminds me of my Fluger type man. It's kind of real. It just feels like the LT but beefed up. I mean, it's just like this thing is just solid man and that's what i really i mean it might not be as smooth as my patriarch but it feels stronger and i think that has to do with the gear system and again that monolithic type body um i was really impressed like i said i caught i, get it, I didn't get them all on video i think i've caught five or six fish on this so far going between little little small swim baits um net rigs throwing little wacky rig type things and I'm going to do a video on that, man. I've got some of these ones I've kind of tried out from some of the other uh, YouTube guys. They're talking about these little small type uh, swim baits. And I kind of put that to test to see if that, you know, that's actually a myth or actually, you know, that that actually works. But let's not get sidetracked. Um, as far as cosmetics, man, this is a beauty. I mean, you can see there how they've got all that, you know, that machined out through the, the spindle there. You got the spool is all with that black and red metallic. You got it. I mean, that thing, and again, with that whole monolithic body style they got there, and I forgot what real it is that that comes from. That is a beauty. And there was, I was pulling in, I think the biggest ones I caught were about two, two and a half pounds. Um, and man, it was, didn't miss a beat. That extra gear, again, this is the 25 series, 2500 series, I think the XH, which is just the, the faster reel, this is 6.2, and I really like that. I learned my lesson that when I was uh, throwing a lot of neds out on the river doing smallmouth, which um, a friend of mine was using a, a 6.2 and I was using a 5.2, I believe it was. And I noticed a lot. I'm not really good at the hook sets. I'll kind of reel into it. I guess that's just for years of doing catfish and everything. And um, I noticed I would miss a lot or I wouldn't get a really good hook set and they ended up coming off. So that I like that extra uh, fast reel because it kind of helps me get in there and get it going you know, you know, really kind of help my hook set, help get the fi the fish in there a little faster, especially if uh, on those windy days when you know, I'm throwing those light Ned rigs where I you know, got to want to reel up my slack real quick. The thing I noticed the most from, like I said before, on my the LT to Tula, is I don't know what it was, and I don't know if anybody else has that issue. I always had a line uh, guide type of issue where it would always slip down and get you know knotted up or spun around, and then I end up after a while casting and getting a um wind knots and i wind knots were constant i remember first time i took it out on the river and was doing some you're throwing real light you know, ned rigs i'm throwing like one tenth ounce you know little z-man ned rigs and i'm throwing it out there and you're kind of boom trying to get it in trying because your current's moving you're going around that current and you're trying to pull it in uh without getting snagged and things would get down and i end up cutting out 
almost the entire spool and then had to re-spool it when I got back to the hotel and then go out there and do it again. And even after the second or third day, I was I had to re-spool it again. It was just, it was a constant issue for me. I don't know what it was, but I went out there with these all three days and never had an issue at all. And it never, the line never slipped down. It never, you know, because what it was is when I would go pull and then reel, the line would not, it was almost, I thought it was like the fluorocarbon, too much memory, and it would kind of come down and I would loop over itself. But I guess not, because no issues here, man. Like I said, I never had once. And I watched it close, even tried to get it to do it. And even sometimes I was like, ah, there it went. No, it no issues whatsoever. So I don't know if it was a different type of spool design or what's going on. If you see there, I mean, I've got a lot of line on there. I know friends of mine, to kind of prevent that, they won't. They only put about 50% of line where... I'm out there, I'm always worried about getting spooled by fish. And so, you know, I always try to keep plenty of line on my reels. Um, yeah, no issues. The handle on that thing, I really like it. It's really similar to Tatula, the Tatula one, which is that that thin aluminum machined uh, type of handle there. The grip is, I think, a little bit better, better designed. It kind of reminds me of uh, some of the ones that are going on the, uh, the bait casters. You, you got that there with the little chrome. Really nice, really pretty. I really enjoying it. Do I think it's worth the upgrade? Um, yeah, I'm gonna say yeah. I think it is. You're you're looking at two hundred dollars to two hundred twenty nine dollars. I actually got this one on sale on Amazon for two ten. I think it was. Um, so I jumped all over it. Uh, yeah, man. Just for one, that peace of mind of not having to worry about your anti reverse going out, then having a sealed system. So if I you know I dunk it, you know, especially if you're on a you're fishing you know, a lot of smallmouth and stuff where you're on a river and a current, you know, sometimes you're going to, you know, you get dumped and you end up getting going in the water or you're, you know, you're fighting one end and the, the real side goes in the water. N knowing that it's, it's sealed system, you're not really going to have an issue. Uh, that peace of mind. Yeah. The extra strength, I think really, really kind of impressed me with those, those larger gears, man. And it just, it just felt like you had that more that more torque man like if i got a really big fish on there and i really got into a real good fight like the thing this thing felt like it wouldn't blink man uh the body feels stronger um feels overall like a better reel better constructed reel so if i were going through there and they were both on the shelf and i'm like do i get the tula for 200 or to go ahead and throw this down even if it was full price and it was 229 yeah i would what is this going to last you longer it's 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 all around it feels like a better reel i think they say they kind of built this more i have never used one but i've heard a lot of it it's like the die cadre i think it is or something like that and it's one of those ones where it's like a dealer only thing um and i think this is kind of it seems like it's more of a mass marketed version of that the way they built it from from what i've seen i could be wrong but that's from what i've seen in comparisons this kind of seems like where it is i think that one the cadre or whatever has a little bit more features but i think this is you know, it's getting you in that ballpark. And for $229, man, you can't beat it. It uh, It is really impressive. I'm going to be putting it up head-to-head -head with my Patriarch, which usually that Patriarch runs about, you know, 219 220 something So they're, they're right there with each other. So this is pretty much a major competitor for it. And so far, I am very impressed. If you can get your hands on one, I think now they're getting a little harder to get. But, and you're on the fence I would I would jump on it. I think once you get it in your hands and you feel that extra strength and the sturdiness, we'll see if it loosens up and you get any kind of shaking or anything, you know, from the you know the tolerances and everything loosening up on the reel. But so far it is solid as a rock, and I mean you can just you kind of feel it, you know. Even when I'm fighting fish, it just like I said that before, it's it it feel like it's not going to blink. So I would have no worries throwing this out there and pulling in, you know, a five six pounder on this and thinking, oh man, I hope I don't roll a reel. No, I think it, it can more than handle it. So, man, again, I hope I gave the basic what everybody's looking for. Again, I try to keep things simple and not going too much, but I, I do think it's worth the money, and I do think if you're, you know, on the fence and you're going out to buy a new reel and you're looking at the Tatula or you're looking at the Ballistic uh, MQLT, I think the new design, the new body, the no anti-reverse, uh, just the, the the new gears, I, I think it's, 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 it's worth giving a look, man. Um, I actually have, I know people put a lot of comparison between the, Sh the Shimano Vanford. Um, my father-in-law has that, so I've had a lot of time hands-on with that too. Comparing this to the Vanford, I like this better. I think it feels stronger. I think the Vanford only advantage is the spool design on it. It's supposed to have like a long spool. It's supposed to allow for longer casts. 
I cast just as long as, or uh, just as far with this one, but I think this one feels a little stronger than me. Um, again, you can get in the comments, debate about it, but I think this is where it's at, man. For that, uh, I think, again, your Vanford's, I think, even more than this. I think the Vanford's sitting about 240, so this is a little less. So if I'm looking for the Vanford or the Ballistic MQLT, uh, I think I'm going with this one, man. So, hey, again, I hope that gets what you, meet, you need, man. Until next time, if you've got any questions, hit me up in the comments. I'm more than willing to answer questions. But for my hands-on experience, ballistics is where it's at. All right, man. Until next time. Thanks.